back out. That is Loth's was... bubble. Loth's bubble. That is what they termed it. We have our agents intercepted certain things. We have connections in certain areas. We watch for this very moment when these extra planar beans, these other, and the demon queen, and she says, I, well, Loth, she is behind this, her machinations. She has created this portal, and I think it will inevitably envelop the entire planet. We had a member of our party who was trying to figure out what it was and how, how to stop it or shut it down. And he had instruments that could detect it and, 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 and a box that could read it. Ah, but Loth has made an alliance with, with the one that destroyed us. Or it was not her that destroyed us. It was a, do you know the word artificial? I do not believe I know this term. It is when you replicate something with unnatural processes and you create, but in this case, they created a artificial intelligence, an entity of great intellect, yet no conscience. In fact, it had no flesh or blood. And like your new prosthetic there, she, that's, she says this strange term to you, it is, has no life of its own. This thing took over a universe mm -hmm. before it was stopped. But the, in that universe is where we have these things. And she kind of grabs this stethoscopes around her neck and points toward the glowing orb thing that's hovering above the room. These, uh, you may have encountered these things, I sense they are technology. Mm, that may be the term that Leto used. In our universe, we were ter called the Bene Gesserit. Ah. We were a female order sworn to uphold secrets of a bloodline. Now, there are members of your group that we know carry the blood of an individual from our universe as well, one called Duncan Idaho. The yes. blood runs in Leto's veins as well as Bodica. Yes, the half-sister to Leto. Unfortunately, um, one more piece of information needs to be shared in this. Leto's body is no longer occupied by Leto, and his body is held by our enemies. And there's, they give a look of consternation, of course, and is he, does he live? Yes, he lives. Um, in our assault on the, on the hill giants. So you to have a good chat here and you, you can, you feel very intimate and trusting in these women, but you sense also that they're, they, they're part of a sort of an order mm -hmm. and have, there's, you sense a large agenda in a sense, but there seems to be quite genuine. You feel that you can be honest with them and you can sense that they can, you, that they're reading your thoughts too. They're looking at you. And they're, they're just watching every little nuance of your face and body and stuff. And they're intently studying you for your reactions and stuff. And, and you sense that they're reading you. Mm -hmm. Not, not uh, malignly. But late, late, like a latent telepathy type thing? Yes. And I don't, you know who the Bene Gesserit are in metagaming briefly? Oh, uh, from the Dune series? Yes. Okay. Yes. So they do have some extraordinary powers that have to do with uh, much, much like a monk. That's why you recognize this, mm -hmm. where they've perfected the bodies and the neuro reactions. And they called it the Prada Bindu training, where they perfect reflexes. And they, they became the most dangerous fighters in the universe, the Ben Jesuit, frankly. They were yeah. amazing monks. Like these women, you sense their poison stuff. They probably have martial training. 
it's part and they're part they're almost like templar knights um in that they have their part monk part uh cleric but that's the wrong term they're from another universe it's hard hard to categorize them yeah well it'd be a different uh entirely different social structure but yeah um so but yeah no i i understand i i'm not big into dune but i i have seen it and i do know the basics of it right so you feel that you can just you can tell they seem to know a lot right and uh they're fairly well informed that surprises you and you and they've told you that you're you're deep in the crystal mist mountains by the way yeah and, oh uh, where we are here where zhang is oh okay um not not to be maligned to these guys or, or uh, deceptive or anything, but she has a uh, has the ability to resist ESP and and various mind reading things. So she wants to just try and see if she could block one or two of them at different points and see if right. see if it actually works on them. Whether this uh, latent telepathy is actually nice. reads everything, or if she if she can actually now, do a is little there a bit percentage of on that or dice roll? Uh, yes, I believe. I think I just let me pop That's a her. Very up good here. call, by the way, because you, yeah, you feel that they're just, and well, they're looking into your soul in a way. If you let them, and you sense they're they're powerful women. They're if they're probably, yeah, at least tenth level. At least the the one is at least. Uh... She's, her name is is. Uh, Mother Teraza is her name. I I'm I am Mother Teraza, and this is Sister Chenoway. And and I am Master Zhang of the Sky Heaven Temple. Yes. Um, at tenth level, it is down to an eighteen percent chance of working. Eighteen only. Yeah, it started off at thirty. Oh, I, oh okay, that's a good thing. Yeah, I was going to say I've being effective. All right, so I, I have to roll to see if, and uh, okay, interesting. It starts off at 30% and minus 2% per level above fourth per chance of working. So uh, Terraza suddenly frowns and and exchanges a quick look with uh, Chenoe, and then they both grin a bit and go, yes, you are strong. Uh you were wise to question us. Wise. That shows great wisdom. Now, as to your arm, we have, we are reluctant and apologize for having to have to replace it with this artificial thing. But we have given it a couple upgrades. You'll find that the arm, through solar energy and perhaps by some other means, can be charged. And up to three times a day, you can discharge an electrical shock out of the hand. You can use this while a strike. You can use it in other means. It's just energy you can create in your hand. Mm. It's called electricity, and it's powerful. And it carries through water and other solid objects, including bodies. I've seen this... Uh from some magic users, from users of magic that can can touch a person and, and make them sh stiff and shake, or a lightning bolt that they can launch across the plains. Yes, very and some similar. of the some of the druids can call from the sky. Now you have three charges, and you can expend them all at once, and they add an extra die ten points damage. Also, your grip is that of a uh, frost giant. That one hand, that arm has a strength. That uh, we, arm. Have not, we have not tested it. It is incredible. It, with strikes with that arm, so one attack around kind of thing, I'm going to kind of say, mm -hmm. you get a next, you have the strength bonuses of like a frost giant. Ooh. And, that, and you can do other things with that one arm. If you can anchor it and stuff, it, it, she says, we're not sure of the limits, but it's very strong.
However, damaging it will be tricky, and you must come back to us for repairs. If it is damaged. We, we will uh, endeavor to, to do that. You can use it as a shield and stuff. She says it's, it's strong. Compared to a normal sword or a spear, it would deflect blows from a, from a sh sharp weapon? Mm, indeed. And the, the life expectancy should be an indefinite. Um, but these things can re be repaired. Okay. Yeah. This. So the, be... the nurse on your left, or the sister on your left, has finished disconnecting the tubes from your shoulder, and and you can see already that it's the, the wound is mended extraordinarily. Like she says, it's been about thirty six hours since you came here. And we have been regenerating scar tissue and, and flesh or soft tissue and connecting. And it's all we're just waiting now for the neural connections to complete. And within hours, it will be operational. Ah, the this is much faster healing than than resting in my monastery or even the extended healing that monks can do over their, their body them, themselves. We uh, found a technology to create nanobots, they're called, and they are in your body now as we speak, working at a tremendous speed. Mm. Not sure this meets the definition of mastering my body, but... It now appears this is part of my body. This will be oh, it's deeply connected to you. It is part of your skeleton now. It's a, it's you, that arm. You will feel pain, though. We have connected your neural connections, because mm. that's the only way we you could feel sensation was using yeah. your ex the existing system. Mm hmm. This is something I will need to contemplate for a while and think and delve deeply into. I'm afraid you will not have much time. But we sense that you are in a deep hurry. The eagles are resting. They've flown a long way, but we'll be ready soon to bring you back to the Hell Furnace Mountains, where they know the party is. They are currently resting. They had encountered a deep, uh, brief rebuttal from their first assault of the Kingsner's caverns. Ah. This your friend told me before. He was denied entry to the valley, of course. So, Sir Gwyden, we sent back with word of your predicament. Ah. So, I take it uh, Gwyden was the one who was assigned to bring me to wherever help could be ar arranged? Yeah, but he flew back right away, like 36 hours ago. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, yeah. I, no, you're right. Just saying to the, because with her, with her being unconscious, she wouldn't know that. Right. Yeah. So they fill you in on what happened. Like Sir Gwyden told us that they assaulted it. And that's why they know. That's why they know a lot about your party, actually. And you realize that now that Sir Gwyden had a, a quite a chat. I was hoping Scott could show up because I had a little encounter with him with the Bene Gesser. That could be very interesting. <laughs> So you feel you, you can trust or not trust these women. They're, of course, from another alien place. Um, so they say we don't have much time, but these are what we know now. Was there anything else they added to that, that arm? No, that's about it. It's the super strength. That arm is like you can just crush stuff with it and just grab things. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, and the shocking system. And then she goes and... We are we are aiding you uh, because we realize that you are in in the party with uh, the the two members that have the blood of Duncan Idaho. We would very much wish to see them. If you could convince them to come see us, we would be eternally grateful. Um, I could speak with them, but I cannot command them to 
to do anything as they are their own free free people. But um, I, I can present your inquiry. And you can make a plus 10 wisdom roll. It's very difficult. Um, Just as you're kind of, you're both look at each other intently for a minute because they, they looked rather. Oh, that's a 25. <laughs> so it's, yeah, they and it ends cordially. Uh, you're, you're not very tired anymore. Like you've been out for 36 hours. Yeah. And, and a long one the, sleep. Yeah. One of the, uh, what it was, uh, what did you call it? The IVs that they had in your oh, arm yeah. was a, a healing potion, basically. Mm. That was just regenerating you. And you, you get up, st- sit up in the bed and swing your legs around and you realize now your arm and the nurse goes, there's one more injection. This will destroy the nanobots. They all must be destroyed in your body. Else they will linger. And they have a tendency of coming up with their own thing. And so she <laughs> comes up with this kind of needle gun. Hold still, please. And I guess you let her. I got no other idea what was going on, really. So sure, or like yeah. kind of confused look. And she injects your thigh. <laughs> There. Now all the little creatures should be gone shortly. And you do feel a little different, a little tingling in your shoulder and stuff. And mm-hmm. it's like, huh. Do we do you have a few minutes to spare for me to try and figure out what I'm doing with this? What I can do with this, as I really don't know what to do with a earth arm. It's also, we surmise that you can somehow project that energy out of your hand for distances similar to lightning bolt. Oh. Would you mind if I name this, Darren? Of course not. Oh, that would be very good. Just trying to, because the metal to her would look as earth, right? Like metal, steel. And she, they're talking about a lightning bolt projection um, and part of the sky. So she, she wants to name this the arm of earth and air. Wow. No, that's very good. She's, she's, that's very apt. She says in, in uh, the tongue of our universe, that is referred to as, and let me look at this real quick. Or Earth and Sky. Would that be that sky would be better? Earth and Sky. Dawnbringer. Cool. Nice. So they're both they both nod and so yes, we do have not lot like you you're leaving in like an hour, if that. Okay. So, and I'm also bumping up the damage on those. It's uh, it's going to be a bit more each charge. Okay. Do you want me to put this in uh, on Jang as, as a separate weapon type, or how, sort of? Because it is. It's you're going to have to integrate or, it into your this your routine. You're going to have. There's going to be one attack around where you have like this iron fist move where you can. Use a charge. You have three charges a day, and you 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 don't you're trying to figure out. She kind of mentioned, well, we surmise that you can just extend energy through your hand, but there's means to project it. Sorry, Darren. Sorry, Darren. You broke up there for about fifteen twenty seconds. Hmm. I think my cat was mashing. My keyboard there. Uh, maybe that was it. I, I could s- everything froze up on your screen, and you're you just all jumbled for about fifteen seconds, twenty seconds. All right. Sorry, I so, didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's no problem. That's die twelve per charge, by the way. Okay. And you 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 sense you can charge it up and extend all at once. 
and so, and they said sunshine will or the the sunlight and, will. and not sorry not pardon to interrupt but it's not die twelve it's actually three die four, and then you can pile them up so you can get all the way up to nine die four. Okay, I'll find some way of making this an an entry on her character sheet. Yeah, go ahead. You were saying something. Yeah, no, I was I was, I was just going to say like um making this an entry on in her weapon uh weapon section and then I do like you say one attack around with this left hand as one of her martial arts attacks and then the other ones with the, with her regular stats. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the frost giant strength bonus, I was just looking that up and I've changed my mind again about the damage modifier. Okay. Uh per charge, it's going to do Four die four. So you all three would be, of course, twelve die four. Okay. That's still quite a quite a jolt to your body. <laughs> Definitely. And you can use it in different means. Like you you'll have to discover what different ways to use it. And like I said, mm -hmm. it, you don't you don't understand this she mentioned things, words like conducting and but you you remembered like solid so objects and Yeah can transfer the energy the uh the magic user spell used by by beginning magic users they can grab hold of armor and shields or touch yeah. armor and shield and just blast through it with that with that charge that makes the person wiggle and dance uh, uh what's that shocking grasp shocking grasp right yeah so another aid another sister brings in a meal and you're famished absolutely famished and you just hork it down and you find yourself starting to get control of this left arm suddenly it's like whoa and there's not much pain and it's moving quickly and it, you realize how fast it is it's just and strength like you crush the cup when you grab it just, oh oh geez and then you're having trouble just grabbing stuff because it's just so sensitive you're used to just well an old whatever your strength was 15 or something yeah uh, now you suddenly that arm is like holy Jesus! Uh, you're afraid of it a bit because it's okay. You go to scratch your forehead and it's like, oh, hold on! It's this metal. <laughs> yeah. Whoa! Careful. Kind of, kind of gouge in my and forehead. It, and it does look weird. You look at it. It's like, like I said, like there's no skin. It would be yeah. just like uh, you can you can see the the quote metal skeleton with all its articulating parts and stuff. It's just intense. <laughs> So this isn't like um, um, Colossus, where you just see the see the outer surface as metal. Um, this is more like um, uh, you see the little way, way, Winter Soldier type arm. What kind of soldier? Uh, from uh, Captain America, his buddy that had the arm. Oh, the Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. Replaced by by the Hydra agents. Right. Okay. I, I I remember that now. Very similar. Yeah. So it's more like that than than yeah, colossal. Yeah. You have muscles and stuff and tendons and ligaments, but they're all artificial. That weird yeah. word. It's it looks very much the same. A bit skinnier because there's no skin and stuff. So you have the layer gone, and it's but the strength is incredible. You're just ah. Uh. Like you, you, you just tried out a couple things, like just putting the arm down and lifting yourself up quickly and pulling things, and you grabbed a couple things and squished them. Like one arm push ups with that is no no problem on that side. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> all day. <laughs> <laughs> and so, in a sense, it's it could be considered an upgrade, of course, on your old arm, and you're you're starting to realize that well, your old arm is gone; it got ripped off, physically ripped out of your whole shoulder the whole socket was gone like this yeah. whole shoulder this whole piece is all metal artificial yeah and i assume it like overlaps onto some of the real flesh and attaches yeah. to the... even your clavicle is artificial right? oh and your shoulder blade is not that's the only part that's probably fused to the rest is all artificial it goes right in because you it was he just didn't rip your arm out he kind of ripped the whole piece and shoulder was gone and yeah, with its in, uh, in, integral parts, extra tendons and extra extra. It's a mortal wound. <laughs> oh, <laughs> very mortal. And uh, 
But you're, yeah, you look at it again and you're starting, yes, and I will call you Dawn and Sea or whatever it was you, pardon. Uh, Earth, or the arm of Earth and Sky. Earth and Sky. Because it looks like metal, right? So it, it looks Ooh. like like sure. Earth and, and Earth and things. But then she's talking about this this electrical discharge, which is a sky attack, which is great because she's from the Sky Heaven Temple. Another so, sister enters the room and says something in a whispered language to the mother. And then she goes, ah, it seems that Kenthil is back. That is the name of your eagle. Ah. He awaits. He has rested and awaits the journey back. It is approximately about 800 leagues distance. It's quite a distance. At, At least, least probably about 1,200 leagues. But uh, you will get there... Your friends, uh, Gwyden said that they had found a place to rest and recover. So they will bring you to this place, hopefully, and you will reconnect with your friends. Again, we implore you, please, you must bring Leto or Bodica. Or do you know of one called Ganima? Ganima. Ganima. And you do, by the way. That's Leto's twin sister. He's talked about her a couple times. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was trying to piece together where... I thought I'd heard something like it, but I couldn't remember where. Yeah. And you do know, now you can hold this back, but she asks you, have you heard of the one Ganema? And both of them kind of, their eyes light up a bit, you notice. You can't help it even. Yeah. Um, vaguely, possibly? Um. Do you know where she is? And no, she, she's not been with us. Um, I can't recall off the top of my head if, if I ever actually knew. Hmm. Well, please, it is so important that we could just talk to them if they were here. Now, there is no mail allowed in this valley. But we, we will give you this. And she does give you a, a necklace. Okay. And what what is it for, or to who do, to whom do I deliver this? It has a powerful uh, word of recall on it. it. Can be used once to bring you back to this place. Okay. This would be best used when uh, this is damaged or possibly to if they decide to take up your offer to come back here. I will have to ponder when to use this most wisely. Okay, and they kind of usher you outside onto this large balcony. You find yourself in this valley quite high up on this mountain. And there's a kind of monastery-esque complex sprawling out on either side. And mm -hmm. there's, it's not that large, but there are, you see all women only, of course, in various garb. Some of them aren't dressed like the sisters. Uh, there are some that obviously aren't sisters. They're tending to other things and have different professions. And there seems to be this elite cast of, of, there's not a lot of them. You don't see a lot of them at all. There might be a dozen in this whole complex. Mm. And she takes you to this outcropping on this cliff, and there's there's the majestic Kenneth Kenthel waiting, nibbling on some food, rending apart some lamb, mm -hmm. gobbling it down, and being attended by some sister, a sister and a couple of helpers. And she turns to you and goes, well, you have our blessing. And we implore you for our favors. We ask nothing but contact with these people. They hold secrets in their genes. Do you understand this? In their very genes, their makeup, the coding of their body, the software of their body. We need to see it. I do not know these terms, but I will uh, relay your... Relay your request, most definitely. Take this. She gives you this book. 
It will describe some things in some terms I've told you okay. about technology, about our universe. Perhaps you will have more understanding why we are here. Can I understand anything that is wrote in? Any language is wrote in, or is it something that I can't understand? Mm, good question. Actually, what she gives you is a, a basically a it's a strange looking glass instrument in which okay. she instructs you to press in this corner and then, uh, push your fingers across the surface in this exact pattern and it will open it up. And then when she does it, she, and you suddenly see this, it appear and there's a whole bunch of figures and then she goes, ah, I must translate it. And she, she her fingers move super quick over the screen. You see like all these little, images and diagrams and stuff and she's selecting things and click and then suddenly that's common and you're ah. reading and it's yeah it's and you're suddenly reading files of so and so and it's got a whole bunch of sub files and there's a menu can i have about two minutes here darren i got a phone call of course Okay. So Kenthel kind of looks, sees you coming up and nudges your chest and shoulder, their beak, and their beak's about the size of your torso. Mm -hmm. 
So you're like kind of, oh, you steady yourself and you find yourself, your metallic arm comes up and you just make a dexterity check. You're still getting used to it. Um, oh, shoot. Not, not with a plus 10. No, it's no, not a plus 10. Oh, uh, okay. 15 is uh, yes. within So you, you stop and you, you pet her or kind of, right? Caress her beak a bit with your metal arm. And it, you feel sensations. You feel the soft feathers around her eyes. And it's weird. It's, it's so tactile and powerful. And it's mm. an improvement, you sense. Like, you can really sense things. Find it's things. Fine, fine detail on, on the receptors of, in the... Yeah. Now, make a uh, plus 10 wisdom roll. I passed that one. I got a 17. Well, you have high wisdom. Yes. Ah. Yeah, you sense your your arm improving by the second. So it's still, still, still. Yeah, still and now hold that thought. Put an asterisk there, okay, Dean? Because th that role will affect later on. Okay. Um, that's, you have to remind me about that one. Because it's a follow-up role. But for now, you just sense like, yeah, this hand is is cool. It's wow, and you and you and you. If you forget yourself for a minute, and you see the sisters kind of looking at you with a bit of a, a smirk or a grin, and ah, see, it is working. And they look at each other quite pleased. And it's like it was a very complicated procedure, very complicated. So, we bid you adieu, and well. Remember our wishes. We will be in contact hopefully soon. But I sense you are going to be going out of contact, perhaps. Can I make some kind of uh, interpretation on them to see if they've they've already stated they're helping me for reasons that the will benefit them as well? But the the rest of this is it fully genuine or is it more towards their uh, their benefit they're looking to get, get out of this that's a good call because you're quite wise and you're you're holding yourself back and you're just observing and they notice that too a bit they're very smart and they you sense they're quite old mm -hmm. and they they appear to be human uh, but you also sense that they're very tall their skeletons are very elegant they're you see that they're very genetically perfect. Um, mm -hmm. And that kind of, you were like, mm, okay, uh, interesting. But of course, they're, they're a bit alien. So yes, good call again. And I, I'll give you a bit of advantage on your next rule on this. But for, they seem quite genuine. They're very good at, or I shouldn't say that. They just appear quite genuine. Uh, they seem quite eager, though, to, to contact your friends. And that's set off a bit of an alarm here and that made you a bit aloof right if, if, yeah if that, that's that. kind of the way I, I i've been looking at it like like they they really want the two people who've really been hidden a lot for the most of their lives and we've already run into some people that want them for different things yeah and you're <laughs> withholding information at this point because you could totally blah, tell them everything you know and you but, do know uh, quite a bit, and you know you sense you know things they don't know, and you and they you sense they know that, and they're like, because they were bugging you, prodding you with questions, and, but they also realize that the birds here and time is up. Uh, okay, it's time to time to fly. Yeah, and so back to your friends you go, and Thank again, you. yes, and I will be I will return to, um, bring you news of this, and if my arm gets damaged in some way. I, I suspect regular magical healing will not do anything for this. So I will I will have to come back for, for that. Yes. And with that, you the bird seems to get down, get ready for you to mount it, and you scramble up, and you see it has a bit of a harness on it, like that you'd used before. 
Yeah, and strap, are, strap myself in. Yeah. And it, it gives you a bit of a, it gives out a horrendous, uh, horrendous but an epic squawk. Uh -huh. Launches into this valley and careens off and goes immediately toward the south. And you see the land stretch out before you as this thing gets more altitude. It goes way high. And in fact, <laughs> it goes above the clouds for quite a ways. And you don't see much. And then it comes back down, of course. And then you start to see valleys and rivers and uh that must be the hell furnaces up ahead after you've flown for about five six hours uh one quite short uh short interlude here first before that being able to speak with animals i most definitely want to speak with uh uh kenthal here the uh, eagle itself um about, well, you could have a good conversation then yeah for for miles yeah. about what he's seen in the valley and what he knows about what happened to me before i i was awake and he goes, strange ball has gotten much larger. It has encompassed part of the valleys around the city. The river is cut off. Mm. There's a bit, there's uh, armies have been assembling. There's a large encampment on the hill. There's been groups going in, but not coming out. Similar to what we knew before. That my sister told me. Mm hmm. Uh, I, I, you, you work f with Durwith the Druid, correct? Yes. Yes, I, I believe we had stopped there once before, and some of my companions used your services. Um, have you been before to this place where these women, uh, these sisters, are? Long ago. About 17 years ago, we were, had to go there. Mm. We, uh, we took some other, a male who was brought into the valley. A short male with beady eyes and sharp teeth. Strange fellow. I did not like him. But the sisters were eager to have him, and we owe them dearly. They mend some of our wounds. Hmm. A short male, would he have been a gnome or a dwarf? No. Neither. He was a strange thing we have not seen before. His skin color was kind of gray. Ooh. He did not say much. He was very curt and rude. Once and he did not want to go to the valley. Oh. So he was not a willing traveler there. No. Hmm. I remember his name was Waff. Waff. W-A-F-F. Tyleth Waff was his name. Sisters very pleased to accept him as before I left. They did not give me much chance, not not much explanation. But that's the sisters. Been a gesture to our strange, elusive, aloof. Many monasteries, including my own, are not willing to share information to uh those they deem unworthy and sometimes even close friends are deemed unworthy. Of specific information. I myself fell in that category once. And you guys do spend a couple hours just talking about frivolous things. The eagle is actually fairly intelligent and he's he knows people, he knows Shelfie, he's he's been all over Greyhawk. He's flown around and he tells you tales about bringing to the frozen wastes and going over the Azor Sea and on a bet and such and one flight and so on and when he was young and and you guys form a sort of a bond friendship, and but I would like a charisma check on your part. Okay. And he asks, can you sing? Sing whistle. Sing whistle. And he lets out this huge stanza in sing whistle. Hmm. Yeah, something's wrong with my... Uh... And as your ability to interpret 
the animal tongue, you recognize that it's song. Ah, sing whistle. In, in the, bird speech. In, yeah. Uh, the uh, it's singing is not one of her her thing. Oh, that was a one, Darren. Yeah. Oh my. I, I I've had much conversation with birds around. Uh, um, now, Kethel, he when he brought you to the sisters, um, he was thought you were dead. Well, you were. I was dead. <laughs> yeah, and now he comes back and he calls you the the raised one in our oh. people. And you are a bird friend, I sense. I have I've spoke with many birds around the lands of uh Oh crap. Now when I teach you this bird song, you will be able to communicate with most avian creatures. And oh. perhaps in a favorable manner. That would be most beneficial. And we will consider you eagle friend. And you guys really hit it off. Like over these six hours, you just hit it off awesomely. And previously you'd flown with him before when back originally at the Star Falls. Yeah. And you bond with this, with Krenthal. And he says, down. you can call me anytime and I will come to your aid. Blow this whistle, and he gives you this whistle. I should be able to hear it from most distances. All across the the distance of Orth? I This is amazing. Did not know such things existed. But then again, there's many things existing now that I did not know existed <laughs> a, mere year, a mere year ago. Indeed. Now you see yourself approaching these large hell furnace mountains and you can see the various plumes from volcanoes active or not, the glows of lava and valleys as he immediately articulates himself down a particular way. And he says, we will soon be there friend. And I wish you well as he circles down and you, you see the mound of King Snur's uh, complex and you're way up the valley from it, probably half a day's journey. And he, he, he slyly comes over the mountaintops, dipping in and out of valleys, keeping out of view, real careful. Now you see he's being very careful. Uh, he came out of 30,000 feet, and then he came right down and just whew, arced into this valley. And you feel the heat whew, hit you, and suddenly in the ash. I'm driving that high. <laughs> oh, and yeah, and you're, well, your constitution's pretty good. You're a monk, so you're not yep. get seasickness and or air sickness. And sure enough, he... Planes in around and are and lands, and you hear this whistle go out and this whoop as you see uh Gwyden come around this corner and he's he's looking, his, his arms are up and going, Holy, who can be? Um, do I still have on my my computer uh, communicator badge? Yeah, bird watcher's badge, I suppose, yeah. Um, even over distance of, well, I guess we're not that far apart, but yeah, just communicate them with that. It says, yes, it has been an, a most interesting couple of days, I understand. So what I was going to get you to do as your character is to post this entire summary. Okay. Uh, in the post in first person person, first person from Jang's point of view. Yeah, and you can start and do it any way you wish, or whatever. And I'll probably submit a narrative as well. Yeah. And I might do one of those NPCs from the Bene Gesserit point of view. Okay. Um, do you mind if uh, you give me access to this video link so I can, I can go back and review it, make sure I get it accurate? Oh, yeah, for sure. And you can get to all of my videos. Go to my page if you want. Uh, yeah, I've seen a bunch of them. Um especially a couple of ones where I missed things and, and wasn't available for them. I've tried to go back and listen to see what happened in my absence. Oh, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, I've listened to a few of them. They're kind of neat. <laughs> You're just gonna... It just oh. gives, a, gives me a good good reference point to write